Hey, 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 Brandon Beliso here. You living your best life? Are you living your best life? So, after my video yesterday, a couple of them, the general feedback I'm hearing from everybody in the martial arts industry is they do not want to be regulated by the government. Okay, I hear that. But if we stop to think about it, we are already regulated by the government to some degree, whether it's local or whether it's state. The government is regulating us right now by telling us whether we can be shut down for indoor classes or not. Are they not? So, and fundamentally, we are being regulated by the government. We're all experiencing that right now. So, I think it's a misconception to say that we don't want to be regulated by the government because we are regulated by the government. I think that the, the challenge is we would have better, if the government is here to serve us, we would be in a better position if we could create a dialogue and if we could help them to recognize and categorize us for who we are. Because I, I agree with everybody. And that's why I think the WIN initiative is so important. That's going on with Leon Rogers and Jason Neef. I think that's very important because we are at the mercy of being labeled the gym and it's hurting many small businesses. Now we understand this pandemic is hurting everybody. So it's not only that we're being classified as a gym, it's just generally what's going on in life. We know that. So if the answer is, we don't want to be regulated by the government, but we are witnessing it right now. We are regulated by the government. We need to somehow help martial arts become recognized as higher learning, right? Not just a children's activity, but higher learning. So I was talking to, to one of my students that's working on his master's, and he's very much into policy and 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 the way government behaves at a local level. And he really said to me, he said, first thing you need to do is get involved in your chamber of commerce. We've done that. Two, he said, you can produce a bill, get signatures, get people to sign it, get enough people to sign this bill, and then you can take it to Congress and the rest. Okay, so the, all those steps need to happen. I, I, I think the big pushback I'm witnessing is people look at Big Brother, right? We all have that somebody, one of my, my parents, who's very smart and I admire this man, he had some really good influence, but he said, you know, you don't want the government putting their, their foot across your neck, right? And, and for me, that's not how I want to view it. You know, I, I really want to find out how we can at least have a set of standards that govern us. And the challenge with us coming up with those set of standards, that's what my parent is saying. He says, you know, create an organization, come up with your own set of standards, right? Your own set of standards. And then, you know, much like how unions built themselves and, and other people have built themselves, then you, you, you can get the attention on a bigger level. The challenge with that is every one of our organizations do things differently. And I have to say the best one out there has to be Taekwondo. Look at some of the bigger groups like Kukiwon, the WTF. I mean, they're all the way to the Olympics, right? I was in South Korea speaking last year and Taekwondo is definitely up there on a government level. There's no doubt in my mind. You know, Taekwondo is in the political arena. I mean, especially in Korea, you can go to college and get a degree in Taekwondo. That's pretty, pretty freaking cool. So it's already done. I, I think where, where I, I feel it with Leon Rogers and where my heart and soul lives is I live with a small school owner, right? Most of the schools that are being shut down and permanently are the small school owners, right? The big ones, I sit in the middle, right? With a thousand students, two mil a year. So I'm kind of like in the middle. I'm not the guy with 15 locations, but I'm not a school with a hundred students. Is that this end of it is okay, you might lose a couple locations, you might do some things, but you have other investments, you have things shored up, right? So I get that. But here, that 90% Leon talks about, that's the 40% that's closing right now. I don't see very many big school owners posting that I've lost my schools, right? Not like Sears, JC Penney's, Victoria's Secrets going bankrupt, right? We're not seeing that. At least I haven't seen any posts like that. The most I've seen is a school owner lose three locations out of 14, right? So how do we do that? I don't know, right? I don't know. But I think the challenge with us as a collective to trying, trying to come up with a set of standards, somebody mentioned that is we all behave so differently. We really do, right? And that's why Taekwondo sits in its enclave and they do what they do, 
right? And then even in Taekwondo, you got the WTF, you got Kukyuan, you run all these different groups. That's there. Even in the Kenpo world, you've got this Kenpo and that Kenpo, but nobody's really producing a set of standards that collectively we can all agree upon. And that's what I do like about local, and I shared that yesterday. I see side by side by side right here. I, I was just picking up some vegetables and stuff. There's a Vietnamese restaurant next to a Japanese restaurant, next to a Chinese restaurant, next to a, a Italian restaurant. They all sit side by side by side by side. And when all of them go to open, they go to our local offices, right? And they get licensing. There's a certain standards of practice for health codes. There's standards of practice that are out there. And then it, we, we always try to look to the fitness industry, right? We've all done that. So I look to the fitness industry and I say, well, okay, even the fitness industry, they have certifications they all must get. You either need the American College of Exercise, the American College of Sports Medicine, or the American Fitness Association of America, I think it's called. So there's three basic boards and all of those certifications are recognized. Massage therapists, they need to be licensed. Now each state has a little bit different licensing, but they're all there, right? They're all there. They're all there. So what does it take to get to that level? Right? It doesn't matter. One could do shiatsu, one can do reiki, one can do Swedish, but they're all governed by a certain licensing. See, that's, that's what I'm talking about, right? Because I know we don't want them to tell us what to do. Nobody has to tell me how to hang a picture and do that. But if I become a massage therapist in California, I have to be licensed, right? If I want to teach fitness, I need a certification. It doesn't matter whether I'm teaching uh, step aerobics or, or, or Zumba or whatever the case may be, I need a certain certification. So I think that's really more what I'm talking about. Yeah, the state, maybe the state, Jason, that might be it, right? That might be it. But from what I'm hearing, nobody wants to be regulated by Big Brother. So I, I, I guess I didn't mean that. But I think what I want is to be able to stand in the House of, of, of Legislative or the Senate and when I raise my hand and say, yes, we're a martial arts code, they go ding, ding, ding. They go right here. We know who they are. We've talked to them. We get them. You know, we understand. We understand. One guy posted, yeah, it is that way. You know, even even though he had, I think, multiple locations, when he when he went to get another location, he had to guarantee the lease. He had to guarantee the loan, right? And I experienced that too. When I opened my second location, even though we had done a million dollars a year since 2007, 2007, a million dollars a year, million freaking dollars a year, I had to guarantee my second location's loan with my home. And I thought that was appalling. I have all the financials to prove I'm making the money to pay this loan, all the financials to prove, you know, I can afford this loan and make my rent. Yet, they still made me guarantee it because they look at the martial arts industry poorly. I've shared that many times. When I tell people I own a martial arts school, they go, oh, right? They, they don't, we, we're not viewed as legitimate business. So how do we do that? How do we raise that? James, because we work with children, we should be licensed as there's, yeah, I agree with you, James. We should be licensed because we work with children's background checks, all of that. Right. But a lot of schools don't want to do that because right now the licensing basically throws us into a daycare for the most part. They want the outside play area. They want a sleep area, a food area. So I don't think we need a special licensing for martial arts schools that work with kids. But I don't believe it's daycare licensing. And we know that's the whole controversy, right, with our after school programs and things like that. We understand that that's still a huge controversy. Right. And that has not changed. That has not changed. So, how do we do that, you know? And how do we utilize that and harness that to help the small school owner? Because the 90% of our industry is a small school owner. And I really believe if we get the my, that majority to be able to sit at the table with the minority, and it's no different, right? That 90%, the other 10% are the ones making all the money. We know that. We know that's no different than the allegory. What is it? 1% of the population makes 99% of the wealth. I don't know the exact number. Yeah, but it's more than just working. You see, Johnny, you're right. You're right. So again, how do we make all of that happen, sir? I don't know. But I do understand as I'm witnessing, right, the 40% of the schools that are closing, they're small schools. They're not the big school owners. 
they're not the big old school owners pivot you know they do the different things we have lawyers my lawyer negotiated deferred rent at the second location it's a much different position it's a much different position so what can we do what's a solution definitely not daycare i agree with you james definitely not daycare right definitely not daycare you know it's going to have to be something sim i don't think it has to be similar to a gym i think we deserve to have our own classification because I believe what martial arts schools do, what we do are unique. Now, if we choose to have fitness equipment and we're doing a lot of fitness classes, then maybe it requires a different classification. But I think the majority of us work with kids. The majority of us do not have a bunch of fitness equipment and stuff like that in our, our locations, right? So what can we do for that? You know, I go into most schools, there are 2,000 square feet, it's mat and a waiting area, right? That's not a gym. It's not a gym at all. It's not a gym at all. So what type of licensing does that look like? So I think it really starts with a dialogue and then really defining and categorizing, but I do believe we need influence from higher government. I wanna sit with someone that's well-versed, maybe the city even, right? And sit and go, you know, what I've experienced in nine months being classified as a gym you know, it's definitely affected my business being classified as a gym through this pandemic. And I, But beyond that, beyond this pandemic, I think we've all experienced and witnessed, and I'm going to say it, the discrimination, right? Oh, good, Johnny. I currently have my lawyer issuing a letter to our local public department to get reclassified. Ooh, cool, Johnny. But what are you, what are you going to get reclassified as? Has that clearly been defined? And is that a classification that we can use as a blanket classification for any martial arts schools across the nation, right? What would that look like? So that we have precedences, we have case studies. So when we go, like I was talking to Jason Smith, he said his county asked him if he has a license to be a school. He says, no, because the state classifies me as a gym. So there's a classic example, even where he is in Florida, the state says he's a gym. His local county says, but you teach kids, you should be a school. Right? So helping define that classification, if I could sit with, I'm, I'm, that's where I'm gonna start. I wanna start with our county and say to my council members, as soon as get approved or die. I don't know what that means, Johnny. I don't know what that means. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's what makes me share that is maybe we need to sit starting with the Chamber of Commerce and going, hey, you know, martial arts schools have a real tough time, right? Our classification as a gym really hurt us during this pandemic, but it really showed our weaknesses. I want government, no matter where I go, you know, in the world, or at least sorry, let's start with our county. I know I'm such a dreamer. The county, then the state, no matter where I go, there's a set of standards and practices that we all adhere to so I can go to a bank and they look at us as legit. Believe me, when I'm sitting there in that bank going, let me get this straight. My financials say I can pay this loan twice over. My financial state that I've been, you know, grossing over a million dollars a year at one location for close to what? A decade? And you're telling me I've got to secure this loan with my house. It's just, I think it's a stigma. That's why, again, you know, when we say we own martial arts schools, most people go, oh, you do? You know, you... it's never viewed as, wow, you own a martial arts school, right? It's never looked at that way. Jason, yes, I'm going to be sitting with the city council members, then country and then state. Good, awesome, I love it, I love it, I love it. But this is the type of dialogue that needs to happen. And if it was spawned out of what I posted yesterday, I'm a grateful guy. So we understand it's not government regulation, but it's a set of standards and practices. Because I think that will really elevate us. Nobody looks at a restaurant and goes, oh, they have rats and you know it's gonna be dirty and funky. They know there are health codes in place, right? If I walked into a restaurant in San Francisco, I believe the city and county of San Francisco has health codes and set of standards and practices in place. I will walk into most kitchens and they all have the same hood, the same distance from the prep table to the food. They're all doing things a certain way to get that little number. You ever see those numbers hanging, the placard that hangs up in a restaurant in the window saying, my score is 97. Wow, that's good, right? The, the, the city, the, the, the the health code, they come in and they inspect. They can come in anytime they want and run a random inspection. And then they got a little 
placard, a skull card that says, I got 97. I think that's pretty cool. I believe we should have the same thing. They don't tell you, you, you have to cook Chinese food. They don't have to tell you, you have to cook Japanese. They don't tell you what to cook, but they will make sure that the facility is set up to meet all the health codes. I think that's important. That's a set of standards and practices that I speak of. That's what I'm talking about. Not Big Brother regulating what we teach, but basically that, that set of standards that makes everybody in your community understand this is legitimate business. Legitimate. And I strive for that. You know, one of my clients, Jason Smith, uh, you know, he was talking about that. Somebody said, you don't run your business, you know, you, you run it so differently. I think that's a challenge too, because there are no sets, set of standards and practices. Everybody runs their martial arts school so different from each other. So we can never offer that consistency across the board that builds trust with people. Imagine if I could walk in every martial arts school and I know a front kick might be taught differently, but I can trust that there's a set of standards and practices, just like health codes that are governing this business. I think that's powerful. That's really powerful. And it's something that I wanna explore because I'm no different than you are. I'm scratching my head going, why do you call me a gym? Because for us, we are not a gym. I don't have any fitness equipment. We have people monitoring the class to keep social distancing on all the same things. You walk into a gym, there's nobody walk around going, hey, stay six feet apart. Hey, do this, do that, right? I don't see that, Mike. Regulation is great, those of us with established schools, but it creates barriers to entry for anyone else to enter. Well, it's a barrier of entry, Mike. I agree with that. But instead of looking at it as a barrier, why don't we look at it as a set of standards? because we've all said that or heard it in some form or another, right? There are bad martial arts schools that are hurting our industry. Remember, I don't have to verify I'm a black belt or ever had any martial arts training, right? There's not a lot of background checks and things like that. And I can get a license and open up a martial arts school. I think there needs to be not a barrier, but I think there needs to be some standards in place, right? Just like health codes. They don't care that I want to open a restaurant, but they care if I meet all the health codes. Oh yes, they do, right? They definitely do. So it's funny that we say we don't want to be regulated by the government, but we are regulated. We're witnessing that right now. The government is telling me, I'm a gym, I cannot offer indoor classes. If that's not regulation, what is, right? What is? So I think what it will also do, it'll raise the bar. So that barrier that you speak of, Mike, and I'm a new school owner, maybe because I'm green and I don't know a lot, these sets, these, these standards and practices in place is gonna help educate me and elevate my game. Maybe, right? Instead of going, well, what I wanna teach is this. I made up the system after you know, doing three months of BJJ and four months of Kenpo and I watch a bunch of movies and you know, Bruce Lee said, it's just about expressing yourself. So I'm just gonna express myself and I'm gonna teach, right? I'm gonna teach. We do have that. We do have that, don't we? So what would it take? And, and I don't wanna view it as a barrier, right? That's why I think people got all uptight when I said government. I just think we need to be in the same room with government so they just don't lump us in with gyms. I mean, right now, is a, we are, we are the lost business in all of this. We are one of the lost businesses. That's why we scratch our head when we walk around Home Depot and nobody's six feet apart and they're considered essential and we are not. What is Home Depot, what is their positioning to be determined essential through this whole pandemic where we were not? What, is, what does Home Depot have that we don't? Well, do they have all the money to pay the lobbyists, et cetera, et cetera? Maybe so, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I don't know the answer to that. And now it's, it's, it's trippy, right? It's, 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 it's such a trip, what we're faced with. But it's really opened my eyes. And that's why, again, I'm going to praise the WIN initiative that Leon Rogers and Jason Neef are trying to uh, make happen. They're actually in the House of Representatives, I believe. They're actually talking to that audience. They're in there. They're in the room. So at least maybe imagine if everybody in Senate could all raise their hand and go, martial arts schools, legit, not gyms. They are this. That'd be awesome. Because at least when we're facing things like this, and it's not just a pandemic, it'll be something else that at least we can be looked at when you're, yeah, when your pipe breaks in your home, it's essential to fix it. There you go. Okay. So great. So how can we really show through data? See, that's data, right, Mike? That's honest data. I get it, Mike. That is honest data. 
So Mike's saying when the pipe breaks in my home and I don't have water, it needs to be fixed. So it's essential, pandemic or not, it's essential. How can we get people that easily, Mike, as easily as you came up with that example to be able to say, well, during a pandemic, you know, the martial arts and the life skills that we've proven through data help kids is essential. No question about it. Wouldn't that be cool, Mike? With as easily as you said, when your pipe breaks in your home, it's essential to fix it. Wouldn't it be cool if everybody across in the whole world can say, children need martial arts, it is essential because it helps them be better people. Wow, wouldn't that be cool? As easy as you said, with pure logic, when your pipe breaks in your home, it's essential to fix it. Children need martial arts because of the life skills values it teaches. Boom, that'd be so awesome, Mike, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? So. What's my suggestion, right? I, I spoke to one of my guys that's working on a master, Mark Zelnick, one of our um, parents. So I've had a chance to talk to people outside of our industry. And what I'm hearing is this. It starts with us getting involved with our chamber of commerce. So we need to go to our chamber of commerce and get involved. We are, we're very involved with our chamber of commerce. Um, so we need to start creating a dialogue there. And then maybe, you know, if I sit with the city council, because they know local government, what would it take to get martial arts schools reclassified, at least in our counties? What does that look like? What is it? Do we have to get a bill? Do we have to get, you know, a petition started? What does that truly look like? Right? And then start there and like the ripple effect, maybe it'll go outward. outward. But that's just it because, you know, I've always stood for the small school owner. That's the majority of the people I consult. That's the majority of the people I work with because the majority is the minority. Does that make sense? The majority of our industry is the minority because that minority is not really making the kind of money they deserve. Now, Leon Rogers said that really well. He's starting a group and he says, you know, not everybody wants 10 locations. Not everybody wants that, but I truly believe that if you are a single school owner, you should be making enough to buy a home, put your kids through college, save for your retirement, be able to support your team with a 401k, medical benefits and all that stuff. I believe you should be able to at least do that. Right now, the majority of small school owners create jobs for themselves and they're terrible bosses to themselves, right? And I've witnessed it. How many of you've got an instructor that's old and broke? because they ran that type of personality driven business business model their whole life and they're old and they're broke. That's not cool. That's not cool at all. You know, my teacher is old and he lives from paycheck to paycheck and that's not cool. It's not cool. I don't think it is. So how do we at least help the small school owner create a business that's sustainable, right? That's sustainable for them. What is that number? where we can go to every small schooler and say, well, great, if you wanna save for your 401k, take vacation every year, put your kids through college, make a mortgage payment, and at least have one to two team members that you're paying great salaries with 401ks, medical, vacation with pay and everything. Well, what is that number? 250 students, what is that number? Right, where we can say, honestly, if you sit at 100 students day in and day out, you will create a job for yourself and you'll only make enough to get by. What does that number look like, right? Because I'm all for the hoi polloi. You've heard me say that, the common man, the small school owner, that's who I'm for. You think some guy with 20 schools needs to talk to me? He's got real estate investments. He's got a 401k, he's set. That's the minority. That's the minority. And the reason I challenge that minority is because I've sat in those rooms and that minority, these big school owners are telling the small guy, you need to do ABC. And he's going, I'm not even, I'm not even in that room yet, right? All I really want, my version of success is I want one great school with enough to take care of my family, college, 401k, you know, all those things. That's all I want. That's my version of success, right? That's cool, I dig that, I really dig that, right? So I believe that's the challenge. And I sit in those rooms, man, at these speaker events and they're all people making money. And the first thing we talk about is, you know, my boat or the vacation I'm on, or, you know, I'm investing in this stock and I'm, you know, and, and it is very overwhelming for a sc small school owner. It really is. And I, and I don't think that's fair because, you know, I admit that when I first started out, and I went to one of the big guys 
and I sat in their thing. And at that time, I had 350 students. Even then, I felt overwhelmed by him talking about 20 locations and you need to do this and you need to do that. I'm going, that's not even on my radar today. So I'm not saying that we in the position we're in need to come down because that's wrong. We are all equal. Every one of us are equal that put on a uniform, put on our belt and try to make a difference in a child's life. We are all equal. The amount of money we make is nothing to do with it. And I'm going to say that passionately, right? So, and, and I think those of you who work with me, I, I promote that sense of equality. Day in and day out, you know that. Or all the same. I put my pants on one leg at a time and my poop stinks. Doesn't matter if I have a couple more zeros at the end of my bank account. That's a bunch of BS. It's BS to me. It really is. Yet, I think sometimes because that's how people measure people's success by, that all the speakers on the circuit tend to be that. Right? So they stand up there and the first thing they launch into. And I did that for the first three months of speaking. I have this many schools and make this much money. Da, da, da. But, you know, are you a good person who lives by your values? Do you really help the small school owner? Are you just simply here to sell me something? So I've always made it a discipline. When I speak, my purpose is to help you. So I stand for the small school owner, and those are the ones who are closing right now. The 40%, the data is showing us, are not the big school owner with multiple locations. The 40% is that small school owner. So that business model doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's got a lot of holes in it. It has a lot of weaknesses in it, and that needs to change. And that's where my passion and commitment is, to you, the small school owner. So I want you to think about that, okay? Start by getting in with your chamber of commerce. Start by sending emails to your mayor, send emails to local government. How do we reclassify martial arts schools so we're not a gym? Because we've been totally vulnerable and this pandemic has exposed our weakness and vulnerability. Because here we are blindly being lumped in with gyms because they don't know what to do with us. So at least not being regulated by government, but I believe we need a voice in government and we need to at least have a set of standards and practices where people recognize just like, again, I walk into any restaurant, they have to follow the health codes. At least I know that. That exists, right? I know when I walk into a restaurant, they're supposed to be clean. They're supposed to be up to the health code standards of the county and city that I live in, right? If we can at least do that, then I believe there'll be some, some at least a thread of continuity through every martial arts school across the board that people will begin to trust. Right now, you walk into one school and it's freaking stinky and dirty and they beat up white belts, right? On the first day, you go into the other one. Hey, David's there. Yeah, D David's one of my black belts that's working on his, uh, your master's, right, David? And David's big on, on local policy and processes. So, you know, he shared that we should get a petition. Okay, but for me, you know, we're already in with the Chamber of Commerce. I'm gonna talk to my, my council members. I'm going to talk and say, well, if we really want to get reclassified so they don't look at us as gyms, how do we do that? And if we want to create a set of standards and practices, how do we do that? How do we do that? So every small school or owner out there, if you this resonates with you and you trust that process, if I've earned that trust and I'll continue to try to earn that, would you be willing to hold yourself at that standard? and collectively say, hey, if one of the standards we create is every martial arts instructor will get a background check. And if they have a criminal record, anything that has to do with sexual predators or anything like that, I won't hire them. You know, what does that look like? Are you willing to make that? Because that's what it's gonna take. Because they said that, you know, it's up to each individual school owner to follow the standards that are created. I don't know. I don't know, but I love it. I love you guys, man. I love martial arts. I love everybody that's trying to make a difference in people's lives. That's it. The day is done. But I think it's really important that humility has been something, a life skill I've really practiced and mastered over, I don't know, 30, 40 years. Mike, don't we have some regulations in place already? I believe part of the problem is that most schools don't know what, yeah, we don't really have regulations. If you're part of one group, they have policies, but it's up to you to follow them. If you're part of another association, they have standards. So I believe there's all these different groups, but that's 
what somebody said to me yesterday. The challenge with that, I walk into, um, hypothetically, uh, ATA school. They have one set of standards people follow. Then I walk into this guy that's not part of any association, right down the street, total different presentation. Then I walk into this group over here, right? Might be part of, I don't know, Tiger Rock. They have a different set of standards. So I don't believe there's, there's a set of practices that are in place, but I guarantee you there are health codes in San Francisco that are similar, if not identical, to health codes in Denver, Colorado. There's health codes. I mean, we have government regulation already. As a fitness facility, for example, we have to have an AED on location. Yeah, but I do have an AED. How many of you, you people out there that are classified as a gym do not have an AED? I don't know if you want to put it in the comments, but you know it. How many of you don't? I have AEDs, Mike, at both my locations because we are classified as a gym. So we do it. See, that's just it. I know people say we don't want to be regulated by the government, but we are regulated by the government. If we really think about it, we are. We're regulated by the government, right? I had to go to Park and Rec, which is the division of our, our local government, to get permits to teach in the park. It is our local government that told me I cannot teach indoor classes, right? It's the local government. When I took this property, this commercial property, they told me I had to upgrade all the um, ADA stuff, right? So you you are you are right, Mike. It just we are regulated, but because they don't know what to do with us, they regulate us as a gym. That's the problem. That's the problem, right? Yeah, legal standards are universal, but that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter if you're, you're let's call Indian food, I don't know, um, BJJ, or let's call Brazilian food, BJJ, let's call Chinese food, Kung Fu, let's call Korean food, Taekwondo. Those restaurants sit side by side by side. And I can trust if I walk into any one of them, they are following the health codes of the city. Because that health code, you know, they'll walk in there anytime they want, unannounced, and they will check. And if you're not following health codes, yeah, we are regulated, thank you, Jason, just classified wrong. And maybe when the day's done, we are still gonna be classified as a gym. But if we don't go through that work, I think that's one of the biggest challenges right now. We're all squawking and screaming, going, hey, I'm not a gym, I'm not a gym, don't classify me as a gym, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That's what's the challenge right now. And I would like a bigger voice in government. I would love every senator to know martial arts teaches life skills. I would like every senator to know you know, the impact we have on children's lives. So they collectively can agree martial arts schools are essential. Wouldn't that be cool? I think it would be cool. But I just want to keep this dialogue going. So my suggestion, go to your chamber of commerce was one that was given to me. Start creating a set of if you're a single person, you're not part of an association, anything like that, start coming up with a set of standards and practices that you're going to follow, right? We're doing it right now. We were told by our government, we must do a temperature check. We must ask these three questions. We must, you know, set up so people are socially distancing. We must wear, wear a mask. We are regulated by government. Please don't think we're not, because truly we are. And we're witnessing that right now. The challenge is because government doesn't know who we are. Oh, good, so Mike, so classify us as a martial arts school, but still close us. I don't understand what the difference would be. Well, maybe Mike, if we had a bigger voice, we would be considered essential like the guy needing to fix the pipe that leaks in his house, right? We've always had takeout because people need food. That's a given, right? So even though restaurants here they can they can't do outdoors anymore they can't do indoors anymore but they've always been allowed takeout right takeout's been there so there's something that makes the government say hey restaurants are essential well we all need to eat well we're martial artists aren't martial arts like eating food i would die without martial arts just like i die without food right you feel me who's with me on that one right i feel that way i think i think martial arts is just as important as breathing air See, but that's my belief system. What would it take to get government to see us that way? What would that take? And you know, my wife, cause you know me, I, I go right to my demographic, right? Our demographic is kids. No, they're not, they're the moms that make that bill. So I asked my wife last night about it and this was her take. She said, 
You know, the reason soccer is bigger than martial arts, which it is, the reason Little League is bigger than martial arts, because it is, right? Is you know when you step on a soccer field that fundamentally you're going to kick a ball. So there's that familiarity. You know it's a team sport. You know there's gonna be drills and people are gonna run and those different things. Just like Little League, you know they're gonna hit the ball. You know they're gonna get fitness. You know, right? There's They have sets of standards and practices in place. So already going in, parents are super familiar with what to expect and what they're going to get fundamentally from that children's activity. Unfortunately, you go from one martial arts school, and she said that, you walk into one martial arts school and the white belts have to do push-ups when they're late. You go to another martial arts school and they're dancing around, you know, to, I don't know, Paw Patrol songs. You go to another martial arts school. So she said, and this was her take, and this is a mom now, is that there's no set of standard practices that you can trust. Everything's so different. And my kid has played in three or four different soccer leagues, done different soccer classes. My son does private lessons in basketball and basketball camps. He did the Warriors basketball camp. He does private lessons. He dribbles a ball, he shoots it, he runs, he does drills. They're fundamentally the same. The challenge, she said, with the martial arts industry, it is not that way. Something to think about, right? Something to think about. Something to think about. There needs to be a board of martial arts. Uh, let me pull over because I, I don't want to drive and read this. It's just, I, I need to get home and bring lunch. I was sitting there because I just love you guys, man. And and it hurts me every day. Another small school is closing and, and leaving and passing. And that's not cool. That's not cool. Because all we're going to be left with is what? These big franchise schools. And you know, my grandmother, I'm a third generation small business owner. My grandmother owned restaurants in the Tenderloin. Coffee shops, not even full restaurants little bitty coffee shops. My dad's owned a martial arts school for 50 plus years. I'm a small business owner and and I'll be damned if I'm gonna wake up to this generic world of corporate brands everywhere. Imagine if you can no longer go to a little mom and pop Italian restaurant and all we have is something like an Olive Garden. Oh, could you imagine a martial arts industry like an Olive Garden? Whoa, scary, right? But that's unfortunate because those who have the money will endure this pandemic. Those who have the money will survive. Many of these small businesses that are closing left and right because they had no pivot. They had no resources. They're gone. And all we're left with is some big franchise school that isn't re I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. Something unique about going to that one unique restaurant that you can only get that one type of food and it's super, super cool, right? It's super cool. It's super cool. And America was built on small businesses and small businesses are one of the one industries that are being crushed in this pandemic. Crushed, crushed. And our industry, wow, 40% is what Leon Rogers stated. 40%, that's crazy, man. That's freaking nuts. So what is that gonna end up being? And so it's a hard lesson learned, but moving forward, if somehow, some way, there are a set of standards and practices that every martial arts school has to go through, some type of certification and licensing, where whether I'm licensed in California or I'm licensed in Nevada or I'm licensed in Florida or I'm licensed in Chicago, I can anticipate this is what it takes to open and at least function these are the health codes or you know the standards and practices that'd be super cool I think I think right I think but and and this is the truth and James I, I, I I'm gonna pull over because I, I want to see if you're saying the same thing okay I don't think government officials would be coming and telling you that you're doing it wrong Right, they wouldn't. No, no, it, they, it's just like the, the when I, I was, hey, I'm sorry, I'm just in an area driving to my home, sure. right? Think about that. Well, let's see, Steve, all of the other activities you said, soccer, football, are sports, and have rules for sports, okay? Come on. I would think that many of our martial arts are not like that. You, you're right, sir, it's not, that's what I'm saying. Sorry about that, Steve. 
You're right. I mean, I know for a fact that if the average person saw, you know, I saw this one black belt test where, take that inside, my love. I saw a black belt test where this kid was a teenage kid. And these guys were fundamentally beating the crap out of them. There were three guys on one. And to the average person, that's not cool. In my black belt test, one of the things we had to do, but this was 1979, you gripped each other by the esophagus. My father gripped my esophagus and I had to grip his. And we squeezed the esophagus until somebody said uncle. That's wrong. Think about it. Think of the damage that could have been done in that moment. Right? So, I mean, things like that. And I'm not sure what we do. I don't know if our teachers sit there in a room and think about ways to, you know, I get it. We're trying to make people tough and strong. I get that. But, you know, just things to think about, right? Things to really, really, really think about. So I'm, I'm, this is going to be a continuing dialogue. I just want to say I love everybody. I love the dialogue. I love the respect, right? We don't have to agree. But I think just trying to create this awareness that we're starting to do right now is powerful. And I'm super, super grateful to be part of this. And, and I just want to thank everybody. You rock. All right. Hey, I'll continue this again. Start writing those practices. Go to your chamber of commerce. Tell me what information you gather and let's keep cultivating this. I'm going to read through all of this. Thank you for everybody for the input. Until we talk again, go out there and live your best life.